Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72. Welcome to the segment called Top List. This is the segment where I give you the best of a particular category. Today we're going to do the top five movies that people didn't know were comic books first. For the most part, the public at large know that the Avengers and Wonder Woman and Batman, that all of these projects were comic books first before they became films. What some casual fans don't know is that some of the movies they've been to were films that were developed from material from comic books. So millions of people have seen comic book movies and didn't even know they were comic book movies. It sounds crazy now because comic book movies are some of the biggest grossing movies of all time, but at one point Hollywood treated comic book movies like second class sci-fi. They thought that comics were for kids and that the characters were silly. So if they adapted anything for a movie, they wouldn't even let the public know that it was a comic book first. And they didn't give these projects the attention, the budget, or the big name actors and directors. So when they did fail, it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. But in reality, Hollywood underestimated just how much people love these characters in the comic. They didn't really know how to interpret them. In addition, CGI has come so far to make these projects look the way they're supposed to look. We're in an age now where even average comic book movies make a lot of money. Before we get started, here's a rule. I will count graphic novels as a comic book. That's just a decision I'm making and I'm sticking to it. So without any further ado, let's get started on the top five movies that people didn't know were comic books first. Number five. V for Vendetta, a 2005 movie released on Warner Brothers Pictures. It's about a dystopian England in the year 2028 and the UK is ruled by a oppressive fascist government. A masked man leads an uprising that sparks a revolution. It made $132 million worldwide on a $54 million budget. It starred Natalie Portman and Hugo Weaving as V. He's the same actor that played Agent Smith in The Matrix, which was directed by the Wajowski siblings. The Wajowski siblings also directed V for Vendetta. The film was adapted from a comic book that came out in 1988 from DC Comics and was written by Alan Moore, who's most famous for Watchmen. The mask that's worn by V actually became a real Real life symbol for revolutionaries in real life there are some nations that refuse to show this movie in their country because they think it could influence their citizens to revolt as a film i give it 3.5 out of 5 stars it's kind of long there's parts that lag in the middle it can be a little too preachy and a little too talkative but the action scenes and the premise are solid number four Sin City, a neo-noir crime anthology released in 2005 from Miramax Pictures. It made $158 million worldwide on just a $40 million budget. It was rare that it had three directors, Frank Miller, Robert Rodriguez, and Quentin Tarantino. I believe it has some of the best casting in movie history. The biggest name involved is Bruce Willis playing Hardigan, but I believe the female actors steal the show in this, including Jessica Alba and probably her best role ever playing Nancy. The images of her in that cowgirl outfit doing the striptease are iconic. Even if you never saw this movie, you're familiar with that scene. And Rosario Dawson as Gale is nothing short of spectacular. And the overwhelming majority of people have no idea this was adapted from a comic from Dark Horse Comics in April of 1991 and Dark Horse Presents 5th Anniversary Special. And the story unfolded in Dark Horse Presents number 51 through 62. Look at the comic Gale versus the movie Gale. That is spot on. Sin City had a sequel in 2014, nine years later, but it bombed at the box office. It made only $39 million on a $65 million budget. Let that be a lesson to you. Don't try to have a sequel to a movie almost 10 years after the first movie. Only a few franchises like Star Wars can get away with that. Number three, Kick-Ass, a 2010 film released by Lionsgate. The story of a regular high school teen who decides to become a mass vigilante and takes on the name Kick-Ass. It scored at the box office. It made $96 million on just a $30 million budget. The lead character was played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, who also played Quicksilver in Avengers Age of Ultron. To me and to some other people, he actually got overshadowed in his own movie, by the supporting characters Big Daddy and Hit Girl, played by Nicolas Cage and Chloe Grace Moretz. The film has a intentional campy type of style to it and makes fun at a lot of superhero archetypes. And most people who saw this film had no idea it was based on a comic book that came out in 2008. It was written by Mark Millar, who was the guy behind Marvel Civil War and Old Man Logan. It was released on Icon, which is an imprint of Marvel Comics. This is their little known creator-owned division, but they only used this for a 
A-list creators like Mark Millar who created this in the first place. There was a 2013 sequel aptly titled Kick-Ass 2. It made $60 million on a $28 million budget. Comic legend Jim Carrey also makes an appearance in this movie, but most people didn't know it was him because of the heavy makeup and prosthetics. Number two. Hellboy, a 2004 film released on Columbia Pictures. It's the story of a demonic beast who turns into a superhero and saves the world from paranormal threats. The lead character was played by Ron Perlman, who's now famous for Sons of Anarchy. It made $99 million on a $66 million budget. I personally believe it was an underrated film. It probably just came out too early. General audiences probably were just not ready for something like this. And they probably had no idea it was based on a comic book character that was created by Mike McNola. He first appeared in Dime Press number four in 1993, and his first US full appearance was Next Men number 21 from December 1993. Despite a very low production to profit margin, it did generate a sequel, Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, which was released in 2008. It made $160 million on an $85 million budget. It was supposed to be a trilogy, but we never got that third movie because the budget kept rising and the studio wasn't making enough profit to justify it. But the rumor mill is that this project will be back and that David Harbour will be playing Hellboy. He's best known as the lead on Stranger Things, a web series, and he was one of the finalists for Cable, but he didn't get it. I think Doctor Strange has broken ground on horror sci-fi comic book movies and a Hellboy reboot definitely could benefit from that. Before we reveal number one, let's look at some honorable mention nominees. Music, please. Red, a spy action comedy released in 2010 starring Bruce Willis and Morgan Freeman. It was based on the miniseries Red, released in 2003 from Homage Comics, a division of Wildstorm, which is distributed by DC Comics. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, a Universal Pictures release from 2010. It guest starred Chris Evans, who went on to become Captain America, and Brie Larson, who will be Captain Marvel. The Scott Pilgrim movie was based on the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels, first released in 2004 from Oni Press. Kingsman The Secret Service, a 2015 release from 20th Century Fox. There was a lot of changes, but the source material is The Secret Service from 2012 from Icon Marvel Comics. And created by Mark Morlar, the same guy from Kick-Ass. Two Guns, a 2013 action comedy starring Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. It's based upon the comic miniseries Two Guns from 2007 from Boom Studios. Judge Dredd, a 1995 movie starring Sylvester Stallone and a 2012 reboot starring Carl Urban. Dredd first appeared in a British anthology comic called 2000 AD, first published in 1977. Won't It, a 2008 action thriller starring Angelina Jolie, Morgan Freeman, and James McAvoy before he became Professor X. The film is loosely based on the comic miniseries Won't It from December 2003 from Top Cow, which is a division of Image Comics. Atomic Blonde, a 2017 action spy thriller starring Charlize Theron. It's based on characters first introduced in The Coldest City, a graphic novel from Anthony Johnston and Sam Hart from 2012 and published by Oni Press. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a behemoth of merchandising. Toys, clothes, bed sheets, you name it. The cinematic reboot was produced by Michael Bay, starting up in 2014. The Turtles made their first appearance in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one back in 1984 from Mirage Studios from two nerds named Eastman and Laird who were just trying to spoof Daredevil. They had no idea this thing would get this big. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen from 20th Century Fox from 2003 starring Sean Connery. It's based on the 1999 comic of the same name from Alan Moore from Wildstorm slash DC Comics. And Men in Black, a 1997 science fiction action comedy starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. It's based on the comic of the same name from RCL Comics from 1990. I bet half of you guys have your mind blown right now. You have no idea that these were comic book movies. Now it's time to get to number one. Number one. 300, the infamous battle between the Spartans and the Persians, released in 2007 from Warner Brothers. This may be the best film I've seen this century, no lie. It made $456 million on a tiny $65 million budget and made a superstar out of Zack Snyder as a director. I am one of his most vocal critics on Batman Superman, but on 300, he absolutely crushed it. It is absolutely iconic in terms of its special effects. And when he says, this is Sparta! 
and kicks the messenger into that black hole. That's the stuff that movies are made of that you pay to go see and wish you could get all the time but never get. King Xerxes is one of the best villains you're going to get in movies with a very exotic look if you want to call it that. And what most people didn't know is that it was based on a comic book of the same name 300 from Dark Horse Comics written by Frank Miller released in May of 1998. So of my top five, Frank has two of them because he also wrote Sin City. There was a 2014 sequel called Rise of the Empire, but it didn't do as well. It didn't have the same director and all of the major characters were dead. 300 lets you know that you can have a masterpiece with a very small budget. It's filmmaking at its best and it is technically a comic book movie, even if you didn't even know it. You know the drill. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, and share these videos on social media so others learn about comic power. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye.